In the early morning hours of a sultry Sunday morning, Fidel Lopez took a cigarette break. Inside the new apartment, just past the broken sliding glass door, was his 31-year-old girlfriend lying in a pool of her own blood, dead or dying. He finished his cigarette and steeled his nerves to make the call to 911. 911, what is your emergency? <laughs> Once they had a location, the Broward County Sheriff's Office 911 operator quickly dispatched officers. It was 3.39 a.m. on Sunday, September 20th, 2015. They would find a horror show. Before we start, we would like to send our deepest sympathies to the loved ones of Maria Nemeth, who fell victim to the horrible crimes of that night. Before we begin, please be aware that today's story contains graphic details. Viewer discretion is advised. According to the investigating officer, Detective Christopher B. Piper's affidavit, when police and rescue personnel entered Lopez's apartment at the Colonnade residences, they found the 24-year-old Lopez standing next to the body of his girlfriend, Maria Nemeth. He cried for help, and EMTs immediately went to work rendering aid to her. Blood had pooled around Nemeth's body. Police also saw that a walk-in closet nearby was also splattered with large amounts of blood. Damage to the walls and doors throughout the apartment was extensive. Lopez looked on as EMTs were unable to find any signs of life in her. She was pronounced dead at 4.02 a.m. Obvious signs of struggle and the almost definite assurance that there had been foul play led to a crime scene being established. The apartment was secured. Lopez was detained while investigators were dispatched. Detective Piper said that when he arrived at the scene, he spoke briefly with one of the officers there and then did a preliminary walkthrough through the nearly bare apartment. A Sunrise Road police officer briefed him on who the people were and what was known about them at that time. Maria and Fidel had moved into apartment 308 at 1630 Northwest 128th Drive in Sunrise, Florida, less than a week before the incident. Maria, a native of Peru, was the leasing manager at the apartment complex. Fidel had worked as a mechanic at a truck stop in nearby Davie, Florida. The two had started dating about a year and two months earlier after meeting at a club. Maria had just finished with an eight-year marriage. Fidel, at the time, was living with his mother of two children. The two had moved into the apartment in Hollywood Beach, Florida, shortly after becoming a couple. Around the new apartment were signs of a couple just starting out. There was not a complete set of furnishings for the place. The couple had been using boxes for a table on the night of the incident. It looked like the first apartment of any young couple that had just moved in except for the holes in the walls, the shattered glass door, and the blood everywhere, and of course, Maria's lifeless body. Detective Piper's account said that Maria's naked body lay on the bathroom floor. Beyond the blood on the floor of the bathroom, there was blood on the walls in the hallway and on the doors of the closet and bathroom. 
Inside the closet, there were chunks of what appeared to be human flesh. Detective Piper was then introduced to Fidel Lopez. The detective asked if he would be willing to speak with the investigators about what had happened. The report says that Fidel voluntarily agreed and then accompanied the officers to the Sunrise Police Station. At 7.40 a.m., Fidel was brought into an interrogation room and informed of his Miranda rights. The man then signed a waiver to those rights. Defense attorneys would later argue, unsuccessfully, that since Fidel was not a native English speaker, he could not have understood the rights fully. Fidel told the detectives that he did not read English, but that if they read it aloud to him, he would understand what they said. A Spanish-language version of the form was provided for him to read as well. Fidel, a native of Cuba, had moved to the United States seven years earlier at the age of 16. He had attended high school but dropped out in the 10th grade. He began speaking to investigators about the relationship, how it all started, and how it had developed. Fidel began telling how, on Saturday, he had gotten off work and met up with Maria, who had also gone into work for a couple of hours. She fixed a meal for them of chicken, beans, and rice. After finishing that, they went and visited his mother in Miami. They then came back and went to a Chili's restaurant near their apartment. The two each had a margarita and then shared a third one. They then went to a nearby ABC liquor store and bought a bottle of 1800 Reposado tequila, and then they went home, all sometime by around 10 p.m. that evening. All right, so tell me about the night from when you get back to the house. Tell me what happened. Okay, okay. Um, we get to the house. She was already like kind of tipsy from the margarita and chilies. Um, you know, we start to drink. Um, we put like two car cardboard, um, uh, you know, boxes in the floor. We put the lime on top, and you know, because we, we don't have furniture, so we're about to buy. I want to get paid. We're about to buy furniture to be the, the TV and things like that. You know. Okay. And then. We start drinking and talking and listening to music. And, you know, we have a lot of shock of the tequila. You know, I can have the drinks. Because, some, you know, sometimes, you know, you go a little crazy. And she was she was a lot crazy. And so she was asking me for stuff that she never asked me for for that before. So, like what? You know, like, they want you to put a bottle on, on my clothes, you know. You know? Sorry, I'm just talking right now with you guys. Yeah, yeah. You know, I want you to be you know, open and respect for her. And, absolutely. And, you know? You're, you know not dis you're not disrespecting her. You're just telling us what she told you. I'm her man, so whatever she asks me, I'll do it. Okay. You know? Whatever it is. I don't care what it is. What Fidel said that she asked him to do next, we will not repeat out of respect for the deceased. It was, however, violent and dangerous. He claimed then that his recollection of the exact things that happened were fuzzy because he had been drinking. He then proceeds to skip to just before he called 911. But um, when we were doing stuff and all the things, uh, she told me she wanted to throw up to get out of the bathroom. Mm -hmm. So I get out of the bathroom and I was you know, outside. I believe I was smoking a cigarette. I don't remember if the door was already break or something. I really don't know. I know I break it because she she you know, she is not strong enough to break it. What door are we talking about? The, the, the glass door. I I, yeah, I, I, I just remember I see glass in the floor, man. I really don't remember when I break it or why I break it. You know, to be honest with you, I really don't don't remember. Okay. The only thing I remember clearly is that I went to the bathroom and she was like, you know, breathing. She was like, like this. And then I just want to call 911. And where, where was she? In she was like uh, between the toilet and the, and the the shower thing. Like just honey, like, and I thought she was throwing me in the, in the shower. I mean. But, you know, she wasn't. I mean, you thought she was throwing up? I thought she was throwing up, but, you know, I don't hear any noise. So I know the door, she announced it, and I'm getting straight to that she wasn't breathing. Uh, you know, she was, she was constant. She was talking to me. Yeah. You know? But, you know, one moment I get so so nervous and scared, and then I get the phone and go 911 because she was getting worse and worse. 
The detectives could tell that Fidel's story wasn't adding up, so they pressed him for more details. He said that in addition to the tequila, the couple had bought a pack of condoms that evening. After they had been drinking, he said they engaged in rough activities without using the condoms. He then made sure to tell the investigators that she was conscious the entire time. You know, I just tried to make her happy, whatever. I understand. But she was concerned. She was not, she, she wasn't like knocked out or something like that. I would never do that to my girl, knocked okay. out, you know? Okay. That, that's not me, man. That's not me. Fidel said that the activity started in the closet and then moved to the bathroom, but that the alcohol made it hard for him to remember exactly what they had done. But to be honest with you, details, details, details like that, I cannot tell you, man. I was drunk just like her. You know, I would love to tell you every details, you know, and I'm, I'm doing my best for it. I understand. I understand. You know? I just want to make sure that we're, we have everything that occurred and happened so that when we look at her, we can understand what, what we got, okay? She was crazy, man. And I was crazy too when we walked we walk for a drunk. I mean, like, you know, I like said, she liked said. Sure, there's nothing wrong and with And when that. girls get drunk and I get drunk, I mean, like, uh, whatever. Listen, you're drunk, talking to two grown men, we understand. Mm -hmm. You know how it is, man. The detectives asked him about the argument that the two had had earlier in the evening. He said there was no argument that they were just listening to music and drinking shots together. To be honest with you, I don't, I don't remember when the glass broke or something like that, man. I really don't remember. So I know it's broke the, because I know I see glass in the floor. I understand. I from so the argument was, she was, you were kind of upset she was talking about your manhood. She, you thought that maybe no, 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 she really. Was, was, you know, I was, I wasn't upset at all. I mean, I just felt a little like down, but not upset because you know I know she was wrong and tipsy or whatever, and I was the same. Was there any damage in that house prior to tonight? No, nah, the house there was no, no damage at all. The house was completely uh, restored, like. Everything was clean and in order. No holes in the walls, no broken doors. No holes in the wall. If you see holes in the wall, then I did that. Okay. And why did you do it? That, you know, that's the problem. I don't know why, man. We were drinking, I don't know why. That's, that's the problem. I'm, I'm trying to make up in my mind why did I do that. Mm -hmm. When I do that, it's because I'm pissed. He mentions Maria's ex. Perhaps she had mentioned her ex-husband, he said, in the conversation, but that he went back to being unable to remember exactly what had been said. He then makes a statement that you can tell cracks his own foundations. Right now, my mind, the only thing I know is my brother's dead. Okay. Detectives seize on the emotions that are beginning to work their way past the man's defenses. They start to leverage the acknowledgement that Maria is dead and asked him when did he know she was dead? What had he been doing when she died? The questions are asked in a very matter-of-fact style. There is no accusation in their tone. They keep everything conversational and let him re-spin his story. I'm trying to give her a CPR. I don't, I don't even know how to give a CPR, but she wasn't breathing at all. She was with her eyes like... Uh, open but not moving. And I, was, I mean, I was scared, man. And I was waiting for police or raking to go to go over there, man. Yeah. You know, once I see she, and I was screaming. I was in the floor, trying, trying to make her alive again, and the screaming, baby, will you do this to me, baby? Help, help, help! Somebody has to hear me, man. I mean, yeah. I believe the door is already break when that happens. So somebody from outside have to hear the, the glass was already broke. The, the glass, the glass was already broke. broke. Yeah. And during your argument or into when you were upset tonight, do you remember punching her? No, man. With her or anything no. like that? No, man. Okay. Have you ever punched her, hit her, or struck her no. in the past? No. Nothing physical. Nothing. Nothing. We just agree. That's it. As the interrogation went on, Fidel continued to say that all of the damage in the apartment was done by his hands on that evening. And then he is asked a very important question. So you're saying everything in the house you did, everything that occurred in that house was caused by you? Yeah, every it, breaking things. And everything. The injuries that she has inside of her? Uh, injuries that she has. But maybe I didn't, you know, I put the stuff on her. She didn't buy herself, but she was asking me to do it. 
I know, you know. Before, I mean, I did nothing. Like I, I didn't force her to do anything. I understand. I'm just sort of trying want to make sure her that we have anything. Yeah. I never forced her to do anything. Fidel kept claiming that while they engaged in the rough physical activity, he kept asking her if it hurt and did she want him to keep going. He said he told her she was bleeding, but she still claimed that it didn't hurt. They let him know that the medical examiner had arrived at the apartment and that, as a doctor, his examination showed that the injuries to Maria were very severe. Okay, this is not a case of rough sex. Uh, There's blood... Everywhere. No, Everywhere. Listen, listen, just tell us. I'm doing, no, I'm just yes. doing whatever she was telling me to do. She wasn't man. telling you to do that. Because oh, that's, yeah. listen, Fidel, the amount of pain that she would have been in would have been unbearable. There's injuries inside her that need to be explained. Fidel stuck to his story, but the detectives pressed on, calmly saying that there was no way someone who loved another person could do these things to them. There's serious injury to her. There's things that were done in, in there, and I think you have a little bit of a conscience and you were worried, you were, you were worried because you, you even cleaned the blood off yourself. He begins to break, and they tell him that they need him to come clean about what has happened, that they know more happened than he is telling them, and that Maria, the woman he loved, needed and deserved the closure that telling them would bring. Do you love this girl? Of course, babe. Okay, would you do anything to hurt her? Of course not. Okay. But you did. Right? The injuries that were caused to her, she didn't do them to herself. Of course not. And there was no one else in the apartment. It was me. It was you. I know. And then Fidel begins to open up. He tells the detectives that Maria had told him that she wanted to go back to Peru and visit her mother. While she was gone, he wouldn't be able to use her car to get to and from work. He said he was angry over that and that he doesn't know how they ended up in the closet, but they had made peace. Then they began to have physical activity and she called him by not his name, but by the name of her ex-husband. And then she said it a second time. I, I didn't want to kill her. I know, I killed her. That's whatever I did with her was the reason. From there, Fidel describes a terrible series of assaults on Maria, using both his own body and implements found around the house. After he finishes, he rages through the apartment, breaking things, and then stops to take a smoke break. I can tell you right now, if I'm having sex with my wife and she calls out another man's name, I'm going to get pissed off, okay? It's human nature, dude. Don't, don't, don't. This is not human, man. I just took her life. I don't mean to, but I did. I'm not even going to be able to see her, man. Like, you sorry for what you did? i sorry? <laughs> of course, man. What do you think? He then goes on to tell the detectives that he went back inside, got out of the clothes he had on, washed up, and put on fresh, unbloodied clothes before calling 911. He had done the deed, and now he had admitted to it. As the interrogation went on, forensic experts and the medical examiner gathered evidence at the crime scene and examined Maria's broken body. Police officers checked with neighbors, many of whom said they had heard screams, shouts, and the sounds of conflict coming from the apartment. However, there were no other calls to the Broward County 911 that night dealing with the Colonnade residences. Forensic work turned up more evidence that coincided with the final story that Fidel had told investigators. Fidel Lopez was arrested and charged with the murder of his girlfriend, Maria Nemeth, around 1.30 p.m. that day. A long, horrific night had dragged into the next afternoon before Fidel was shackled and transferred to the Broward County Main Jail. A man who had no criminal record besides a 2014 arrest for disorderly intoxication sat in a jail cell, an admitted murderer, a monster caged and contained. Had it been the alcohol that had set him off? Had jealousy turned the man into something he could never have imagined before? 
In the initial rounds of trial in court, Fidel's defense attorneys attempted to have his entire interrogation and confession thrown out on the grounds of his limited knowledge of the English language, meaning that he could not have understood either his Miranda rights, allowing him to request an attorney to be present, and that he simply could not answer any questions if he chose. The judge ruled that there was sufficient evidence from the footage that Fidel demonstrated not just a working usage of the English language, but that he fully understood what was being asked of him and what he was saying back in return. The motion to suppress was dismissed. Fidel Lopez, accused of this horrific murder, was in line for the death penalty. Within the state of Florida, the death penalty is still available as a punishment. Still, with the heinous nature of the killing and the assault, Fidel could find himself on the state's death row, awaiting death by lethal injection if he was found guilty by a complete jury. The chance of that happening was simply too great. On July 14, 2017, after an extended stay in the Broward County Jail, Fidel Lopez accepted a plea deal before Judge Iona Holmes. In the courthouse located in Fort Lauderdale, he accepted a charge of first-degree murder and sexual battery. On August 3, 2017, Fidel Lopez was sentenced to life in prison. The terms of the plea deal, in exchange for removing the death penalty, prohibit him from appealing the sentence and he can never be eligible for parole. The families of both Fidel Lopez and Maria Nemeth were shattered by the actions of that fateful night. No one can undo the monstrous events that happened, but perhaps some healing has been found since Fidel faced justice and punishment. If you found this story compelling, don't forget to like the video, comment down below your take on it, and please subscribe to the channel. We appreciate every subscription. Also, hit the notification bell in order to stay up to date each time we reveal a new shocking case. Until next time, stay safe and keep your eyes peeled. You never know what's lurking in the shadows.